Li Holloway is discharged from the mental hospital on her sister's wedding day. She waits for a ride home, and her doctor bids farewell. When her mother Joan arrives, she tries to be cheerful, but Li appears blank. At the wedding, Li watches her sister kiss her husband and politely applauds. Peter asks if she's happy to be home, and she initially nods, but later, she admits uncertainty. During the celebration, Lee's father, Bert, greets her with a beer. Lee thinks he has quit drinking, but he ignores her and hands the bottle to Peter. Bert gets drunk and continues to drink. Lee retreats to her room, looking at her old belongings from before her hospital stay. She takes a doll and contemplates self-harm, but seeing her sister and her husband leave in a fancy car deters her. That night, while Lee is boiling water, she overhears her parents arguing about her father's work issues. When she approaches to see what's happening, her father pushes her mother to the ground and leaves the house. Later, Lee returns to the kitchen, takes the hot water to her room, and burns herself by placing the kettle on her thigh. Strangely, she smiles, seemingly enjoying her self-inflicted pain. The following day, Lee attends a typing class to showcase her exceptional typing skills. Her mother picks her up on the way home. During the ride, Lee recalls a past incident when Joan carefully concealed some knives upon her arrival. Lee finds her mother locking the knives on a shelf, explaining it's a precaution. Lee stares at her and then goes outside to dispose of the trash. In the trash can, Lee discovers her old needle and thread bag and decides to keep it. As she holds the bag, she also finds a newspaper page with job advertisements and takes that too. Back in her room, she examines the job listings and practices potential interview responses. The next day, Lee visits an address she spotted in the newspaper. Upon entering the office, she's surprised to find a woman who had left in tears, leaving the place in disarray. Despite the chaos, Lee forges ahead and eventually locates Mr. Gray in the office. He's gazing at a photo of a blonde woman before Lee's arrival. After introductions, Mr. Gray asks Lee some unconventional questions, like whether she's pregnant and if she lives in an apartment. Nervously, Lee answers these questions. As Mr. Gray delves into Lee's qualifications and awards, he presses a button revealing a stunning garden that surprises Lee. She hands over her typing results to Mr. Gray, preoccupied with his phone. He requests a coffee, and Lee agrees, heading to the food pantry to prepare it. While trying to refill the water cooler, she accidentally spills water on herself. When she returns to Mr. Gray's office, he remarks on the potential job monotony and notices Lee's nervousness. He suggests she relax, but Lee smiles and confesses she doesn't know how. Just as the phone rings, Mr. Gray advises her to ignore it and mentions using less sugar in the coffee next time. After this exchange, Lee goes to Joan's car, excitedly sharing that she has secured the job. Back at home, Lee decides to unwind in the bathtub while practicing her lines for work. The next morning marks Lee's first day in Mr. Gray's office, where she takes on various tasks, including running errands, organizing paperwork, sending documents, and handling multiple responsibilities. Later, she often watches Mr. Gray from his office as he tends to the garden's flowers. Eventually, she enters his room and leaves some donuts behind. Mr. Gray mentions that he has thrown away some notes, and Lee offers to search for them in the trash. Before leaving, the two of them share a long, silent gaze. As she delves into the trash, Mr. Gray curiously observes her from the window. When she finally finds the file, she returns to the office, only for Mr. Gray to dismiss her, claiming he had found a copy. Instead, he assigns Lee more tasks. Despite her efforts, Lee struggles to set a mouse trap with a chair. Mr. Gray began to review her work, and their eyes met again, locking onto each other until the phone rang at the front desk. Afterward, Lee tended to the injury that Mr. Gray had seen earlier, feeling a bit embarrassed. She packed her things, and Mr. Gray observed her as she stood by the door before leaving. When her workday was over, Lee and Joan discussed Lee's first day, and Joan mentioned that Peter had called her, bringing a smile to Lee's face. Later, Lee met Peter at a nearby laundromat, and while they chatted about relationships, Lee took a big sip of her drink. They talked about how much they had changed since high school when suddenly, Mr. Gray walked into the laundromat. He noticed Lee and Peter discussing underwear before they shared a kiss. Gray quickly averted his gaze and returned to his car. The following day at work, a frustrated Mr. Gray hurried over to Lee, handing her a letter with three typographical errors. Lee awkwardly apologized, but Mr. Gray continued to scold her, telling her to retype and correct it. Throughout the day, Lee worked hard to fix her mistakes, repeatedly redoing the letter, which frustrated her. Lee approached Mr. Gray's office to submit another letter. Initially, he ignored her and told her to create a bill for a woman outside. However, he suddenly noticed a tear on Lee's skirt and scolded her. He criticized her attire, scolded her for excessive sniffing, and commented on her restlessness. Lee then went to the food pantry, where she practiced to thank Mr. Gray for his advice because she aspired to become his best secretary. But just as she was about to return to his office, she suddenly heard him screaming and reprimanding someone else's typing work. Anxiously, she returned to the front desk, playing with her hair. Later, after leaving the office, Lee went to Peter's house to tour it with Peter's parents. The next day, Mr. Gray called Lee into his office, instructing her to answer the phone. Lee was confused because there was no ringing, 
but Mr. Gray began making ring noises, asking her to answer the phone. He then pointed out that she should have a louder voice and sound more confident when she spoke. They continued their conversation, and Lee confessed that she was dating Peter, but chuckled off the question about whether they had been intimate. They talked about shyness and how it shouldn't prevent them from being open with each other. Mr. Gray then asked about Lee's wound and the sewing tool she always carried, which surprised her. She said she was shy, and they both shared a laugh, before Mr. Gray offered her some hot chocolate. While sipping her hot chocolate, Mr. Gray asked Lee why she would harm herself. When Lee admitted she didn't know, he questioned whether it was because she needed tangible proof of her inner pain to remind herself of her existence or if it provided her comfort to witness the healing process. Lee, still taken aback, agreed with his perspective. Mr. Gray assured her that she would never hurt herself again. That was in the past. Lee nervously nodded in agreement. He then advised her to leave work early, walk home, and breathe in the fresh air because she was now an adult. Before Lee left, Mr. Gray took a picture of her, capturing her relaxed and smiling expression. As she left for work that day, she told her mother that she would start taking walks from now on. Lee spoke to herself, realizing she had never walked alone before, and she began to feel something for Mr. Gray. The next day at work, Mr. Gray scolded Lee for her spelling mistakes, making her teary-eyed. Hearing her distress, Mr. Gray called Lee into his office, where he instructed her to read a letter on his desk while bending over. When Lee admitted she didn't understand, Mr. Gray insisted there was nothing to understand, and repeated his instruction. As she began to read, Mr. Gray suddenly spanked her, startling her and causing her to pause. He ordered her to continue, and spanked her while she finished reading the rest of the letter. Lee seemed to enjoy what Mr. Gray was doing until he abruptly stopped, leaned in close, and put his arm around her. Both were panting, and Lee interlocked her little finger with Mr. Gray's. However, Mr. Gray told her to straighten up before she returned to work. Are we getting the original Fifty Shades of Gray? Lee, still excited about her recent experiences, went back to her desk and handed the letter to Mr. Gray, who came to see her while she scanned some files. He praised her for her excellent work, which made Lee laugh. At home, Lee told her mother that she could now remove the lock on the cabinet. The following day, Lee let go of her old stuff by tossing it into the river, a symbolic way of moving on from her past, before heading to Gray's office. Throughout the day, Mr. Gray assigned her various tasks, and Lee eagerly followed his instructions. Later that evening, as Lee prepared for bed, her thoughts drifted to her interactions with Mr. Gray. She couldn't help but get intimate with herself, but a picture of Peter briefly distracted her. She refocused her thoughts on Mr. Gray. This is what happens to me when my picture of Jesus distracts me. The following day at work, Lee spotted an error in a letter she wrote, but chose not to fix it, hoping Mr. Gray would notice it himself. When she approached him to submit the letter, he ignored her attempts to engage with him. This left Lee feeling upset, but she returned to her place. Later, before heading home, Lee asked Mr. Gray if there was anything else he needed her to do. He acknowledged her excellent work for the day, and Lee went home, feeling disappointed. Baby girl wanted a spanking. The following day, while out with Joan and some friends, they received a call informing them that Bert had been hospitalized. Joan rushed to her husband's bedside, crying, while Lee went to Gray's house. Mr. Gray appeared surprised to see her there. Lee stumbled, trying to express her feelings, but she eventually made up an excuse about needing a letter for the next day. Mr. Gray thanked her for the reminder, but turned down her advances. In the following days, Mr. Gray distanced himself from Lee at work, moving her out of the office and ending their previous interactions. He even threw away the red marker he used to correct her typing errors. Lee desperately tried to win him back by any means necessary. Later, Lee found herself in the bathroom, attempting to recreate the sensation she had experienced with Mr. Gray, but she couldn't quite capture the feeling. The following day, she discovered a worm in the yard and placed it in one of Mr. Gray's letters. When Mr. Gray found it, he cleaned himself in the restroom, and Lee watched him eagerly. Later that day, Lee was in bed with Peter, but her thoughts kept returning to Mr. Gray. Even though she allowed Peter to be intimate with her, she still seemed unsatisfied. The following day, Mr. Gray found the letter with the worm and circled it with a red marker to point out her mistake. When Lee entered his office, she heard someone ringing the doorbell but Mr. Gray told her to ignore it. He then ordered her to undress and bend over, surprisingly, but she reluctantly went along with it, allowing Mr. Gray to touch her. After he finished, she returned to her desk, feeling puzzled but seemingly content with the encounter. Later, at a nearby restaurant, Lee listened to a recording about being submissive or dominant while Mr. Gray burned photos of her outside, watching them melt. The following day, Mr. Gray called Lee into his office and asked her the same questions he had during her job interview. Lee cooperated and answered all his questions. However, Mr. Gray told her that he liked her but couldn't have her work for him due to her behavior. Lee initially thought it was a game, but realized he was serious when he handed her a letter with her severance pay. She left the office in tears, remembering the woman she had seen on the day of her interview, her eyes filled with tears. In the following days, Lee pretended to go to Mr. Gray's office, observing it from across the street. She saw the new secretary Mr. Gray had hired. Lee tried to explore other relationships to see if they could fulfill her desires, but eventually, she stopped and focused on helping her father. Peter proposed to her, and she agreed, not because she wanted to marry him but because she felt she had no choice. As she tried on a wedding dress, Lee suddenly removed the veil and stared at herself in the mirror. 
She rushed off, leaving the engagement ring on the table, and ran to Gray's office. There, she confessed her love for him, but Mr. Gray rejected her, stating that everything had been settled when he gave her the severance pay. He ordered her to place her palm on his desk and keep it there until he returned. Lee continued to wait for Mr. Gray in his office while he watched her from outside. Gray called Peter and informed him that Lee was in his office. He then reached into the office and was surprised to see Lee attempting to answer the phone with her mouth. Murmuring to himself, Gray admitted that he also had feelings for Lee. Inside the office, Peter entered, feeling disappointed. Lee told him to leave, claiming he was intruding. Confused, Peter asked what had happened, but Lee refused to remove her hand from the table. When Peter tried to move her hand, she screamed in anger, slapped and hurt him, then returned her hand to the table, insisting that she didn't want him and he needed to leave. The following day, despite visitors offering her advice, Lee couldn't sleep. She ignored the support of others and continued to stay in the office. Meanwhile, life outside the office carried on, including Mr. Gray, who stayed at home, thinking about Lee. On the third day of Lee's stay in the office, local news reporters covered the story outside, drawing people's attention. Later that night, Gray returned to the office, held Lee, and gave her coffee. As he saw her being taken out of the office and driven home, he breathed a sigh of relief. He carefully placed her on the grass, looking both happy and relieved, and then prepared a bathtub. Gray cleaned her gently, washing her and drying her with a towel. Afterward, he placed her on the grass to gaze at her body, carefully examining each of her scars. Lee expressed that it was the first time she truly felt beautiful. The next day, Lee asked Gray about his life as she kissed various parts of his body. She inquired about where he was born, and he told her he was born in Des Moines, Iowa. They shared more intimate moments as they started to resemble any other regular couple. Eventually, they got married and had their honeymoon in the mountains. What a kink. If you're into that sort of stuff, then this movie is definitely for you. What did you guys think of this one? Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.